Hey guys, this is Those Guys with your host, Matt Marrero, along with your other host. I'm Anthony Toto, hey. Yes, it's Anthony Toto, and we've brought back Monday Night Movies, something that uh, I haven't done for a while. I feel like every time I bring Anthony Toto on, we're just bringing a new sh- uh, you know, an old show back. Last time I had him on during Halloween in July for TV Tuesdays, where we talked about vampires. I'm sorry. I have to bring that up. Yeah, I have to bring that up. And now uh, I brought him back for Monday Night Movies, where we're talking about Juon the Curse. So here's the thing, by the way, Anthony, I didn't tell him this, by the way, all of you know, the title of the movie, just from, you know, the name saying, Hey, the review, I didn't tell Anthony this till this exact moment because I thought he'd get mad. So Anthony, I sent you the wrong movie, Okay. but it all turned out okay in the end because I was supposed to send Anthony, uh, the DVD with Juwan the grudge. Mm -hmm. So Anthony's supposed to get Juwan the grudge. What happened was Anthony got Juwan the curse. Now, why is that relevant? That's like, why does that matter? Matters because the grudge is what the actual title of the U.S. version is because Juwan means grudge. So uh, the grudge was the American title, but it came out after the third movie. So Juwan the grudge is the third movie that deals with all the stuff that it's basically, you know, the, the remake, the American remake is a remake of that movie. However... This happened first. This is the first real movie. Oh, okay. So we both we saw, we saw the same movie. You, we, you're saying yes. We saw yes. No, no, no. Yeah, I sent you the wrong movie. As in, I had forgotten this was the first movie that isn't the Grudge, like Juwan the Grudge. But it is the right movie that you and I saw the the the, the same movie. Yes. No, I didn't. See, we didn't see two different movies, Anthony. Uh, it's just that I thought this was the version that got adapted into the U.S. version because I had this planned for a very long time now. Yeah. So I actually had forgotten that this is not the third movie. So yeah, because things get weird with The Grudge uh, or with Juwon because uh, there's only three American movies, I believe. But in Japan, there's like seven. Oh, wow. I didn't know there was that much. Well, because this movie was a direct-to-video feature. So this was done by um i'm gonna try to uh, try to find the director's name because this was actually not this but there were um there were some shorts that were done even before this that were basically made as like an art project by uh, the i believe it was the director who was a college student at the time oh so, wow yeah yeah so it's kind of funny because uh you know this was yeah like basically he had learned some stuff in co- in film school and he was like I want to do this and they were like this sounds really cool so the, he didn't create this movie from it but he created some other shorts that actually tie into this movie my respect for him just went went up so high right now well yeah well I mean you know, he doesn't have to be a film student you don't have to be a film student but no I mean it is really nice though to see that you know uh, film students creating a huge franchise such as this oh yes I love that I love when when a student of anything just goes on and 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 applies better bigger things and it's it's so great because they just like they started out as 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 just with someone with an idea and 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 just and makes it into like a, a big horror franchise like I love the whole idea. Yeah, no, and they're able to apply their craft very well. So I I, I have to admit it was pretty cool to hear that he was a film student um let me see yes the film was written and directed by takashi shimizu and the the one thing that i'll say though about this film that um i'm not usually the biggest fan of cutting up movies and putting them out of order because this movie reminds me of pulp fiction if you've seen that one anthony i've seen that one yeah so this was very much like pulp fiction switching times uh it happens here, but then it happens before that, like later in the movie, and yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, so the timeline, the way this movie actually worked was the part where the um, the part where the teacher finds out that the woman was in love with him, and then the husband ends up killing his wife, his fiance, all that crazy stuff. Yeah. That happened, and also by the way, the boy was dead. Because he was meowing like a cat, which means that he's already dead. Yeah. If you don't know that. So, yeah, yeah, no, so I, I, I kind of inferred that. In the beginning, I, I, I just thought, because the first thing we heard was the meowing. And I was like, is, is this 
because I knew nothing about it. I was saying, is this a movie about cats? Are the cats going to come out and kill people? Well, wait, but you, so you knew nothing about the grudge at all, other I than... Knew nothing th- about it. I don't really follow horror things at all. Okay, but you've seen how the characters look. You just obviously, like, you know, like, the, the boy in white. Uh, I've seen, I think I've seen pictures of the boy in white and the girl before, but the, I just... Well, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't put them together as they were in this movie... And and it, this particular movie in this particular series. No, that's fine. Fair enough. Um, I don't know if I've ever even seen this movie because I think I've seen the third one, and then I've seen, of course, the original, like the American Grudge. Um, yeah. But yeah, I've, I don't think I've seen this film actually. And uh, but obviously, I knew about you know the boy meowing because it happens in later films as well. I knew about the woman, uh, his mom, who passed away. I knew uh, the thing about the cat. I don't think the movie made it explicit. The guy killed the cat too. Oh, okay. Like he's a sick person for obvious that, reasons. That for obvious reasons, so he killed the cat, and the boy loved the cat. So it's yeah, weird. That's, it's that's, that's just horrible. That's just... Yeah, I know. The whole thing was disgusting. Among other things. Among other things, yeah. But yeah, so the, the way it's supposed to work is that whole death happens first. And then after that happens, that's when it's like, oh, okay, well, we need someone to, like, we need to sell the freaking house. And then that's when the psychic... I love that that whole thing about the selling of the house, because that's a... When you're in a house like that, that's a legitimate problem. Well... Like, what do you do? What do you do with the house? Do you you sell it? And with the the sake. Yeah, that was... that was it interesting. Made me wonder, it made me wonder, d- does, d- does Sake have a, a paranormal like reaction like that? I, w- I was wondering if, if any of that was true because it was, I just loved it. Well, I believe that that is an old Japanese superstition. I don't think they would make one up for the movie. Um, yeah. So I'm pretty sure that is an old Japanese superstition. And um, what I think was interesting was that, okay, so obviously this movie did use gore. Yes, but I do believe that the gore was very minimal compared to what's usually done oh, yeah. in U.S. films. And I think that's the thing that some people, I know like you're not a big horror fan, Anthony, but I know from clips that you've seen or from what you hear from people, I can imagine that you even thought, even with the gore in this movie, it was very minimal. Yeah, no, it was very minimal. I, 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 am, I thought it was going to be something that was just... I thought it was just going to be left and right gore. Like, a- Alien had more gore than than this. Oh, wow, that's true. And I haven't even seen all of Alien. But from what I've seen, yeah, you're right, it does. So it's interesting because, yeah, I, I didn't know what was going to be done here. I didn't realize because, again, I, I, I looked all the stuff up after I had gotten it and went, right, this isn't the one that I was thinking of. Um, this was a direct-to-video, so obviously the budget was going to be a lot lower than a theatrical release. Yeah. And you can even tell that the, the CGI use was, I would argue, even archaic for the time. But again, it still was. This movie came out in uh, 2000. So even at the time, I don't know what oh, you right. really could have done. Yeah. With no jaw. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's that's that, what I meant by the CGI. That, that part, that literally terrified me with the edited out jaw and the... You know, the, okay, the, the edited out jaw freaked me out, but I don't know why. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Just the cons, just the idea, the way the police were talking about it with the um, the coroner. Just, uh, yeah, so there's a victim here, and then there's also no jaw. Looks yeah. at the body. No, she has her jaw. Like, <laughs> like, did we find a body in the area? No, there's just, there's just a jaw. To, yeah, to me, I don't know why I found that funny. Just because, like, like I guess maybe because the thought is, what, what is someone walking around without a jaw? And then you're just proven right, and you're like, oh god. Yeah, uh, that was that was both terrifying and funny at the same time. Yes, yes. Um, one thing I want to mention. So I mentioned there were some shorts earlier. Uh, one of the shorts actually shows what happened to the brother. 
Because, I mean, you might remember, because uh, I know you watched this a few days ago before the show. Uh, if anyone watched the movie, one of the brother, like, once they find someone to buy the house, it was a family. And then there was the, the sister goes to school like, oh, no, I have to feed the rabbit. Then the brother, you know, leaves after that one of the, the, the friend dies. The brother's like, all right, I'm leaving because he didn't realize that she was dying in the house. So when he leaves, he never makes it to school, but his bike is there. So it was That's his right. it was his girlfriend that was like, "Hey, um, where's so and so?" And it was like, "Who who are you looking for?" "Oh, he's just a friend of mine." But that was actually his girlfriend. Um what ends up happening is she like he he just goes missing, and apparently in one of these shorts that was released even before this direct video, it shows what happens to his character. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, so um if the movie didn't make it clear cuz in my opinion, I don't think the movie made it that clear. Uh it's <laughs> I mean, no, just not not like that part. Just something else I want to mention. Um, it obviously is a. I mean, you can kind of tell, but it's not said explicitly. This grudge doesn't just this curse doesn't just affect people who live in the house. It even affects people who come into contact with it. Oh wow! Right. I don't know if you can tell because I mean, you can you saw I what happened. Really tell. I thought it was just the house, but. No, 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 me too. But then the fact that there was that black cloud over the school and then the girlfriend who never lived in that house, you know, just that random friend yeah. of, you know, girlfriend of um, the brother who left. Uh, I looked it up online and it was, you know, the the uh, Wikipedia page and like other summary pages were saying, no, no, it's not just the house. It's surrounding the house. Uh, that's why the teacher was affected. Just by walking in there. It is attached itself to you. This grudge, obviously a grudge because, yeah, you're going to hold a grudge when your husband kills you, your kid, and your cat. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a little bit of resentment there, Anthony. Uh, yeah, slightly. Yeah, slightly. Now, uh... I, I, just want, I just want there to be, like, a, a, a parody of this movie called The Forgiveness. Oh, God. The ghost just hugs everyone. And they're like, that is so sweet. That is so sweet. She is so nice. But they still get hit by a car anyway. Um, yeah. Just just circumstance. Everyone's like, it's the house. And she's like, no, I'm the forgiveness. I don't understand. The kid barks. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I feel... Okay, so I want to ask you, because I can rant about this movie, you know, for the next hour. But I want to hear what you thought about it. Because you don't really see much horror. But I want to know, what horror movies have you seen? Because you threw in that Alien reference. So what movies have you seen? Horror wise, if if Alien counts as horror, then that because I mean I'm I, I'm big in sci-fi, so I've seen I've seen a lot of sci-fi stuff, but I've never really dipped into horror. Uh, like here and there, I, I've seen parts of horror movies. Of, I've seen old horror movies like Dracula and um, uh, Frankenstein and the black and white horror. Uh, okay, so you've nothing, gone nothing really recent. So you, I would say. so you've either gone universal, right? You've either went the universal route. You either went, um, you either went for Nosferatu. Yeah, yeah, Nosferatu. Yeah. Or you went the sci-fi route that just you stumbled upon Alien. You were like, oh, look at this Sigourney Weaver picture. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. I love Sigourney Weaver. She's amazing and everything. Oh my god. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So then that's how you found out about those I, movies. I would watch Sigourney Weaver in anything even if it was the history of cheese. I mean, she would she would make a a, a great uh, brie. I don't know. Um <laughs> I don't, I assumed it'd be a kids picture where they just dubbed them over. Um anyway, would I uh, the reason why I want to ask you like what you've seen I is because it, though. you I like liked it. yes you like this because I was gonna ask like what about it you know like I mean because it's funny I'd say what about it uh, what about this movie drew you into it well the fact that I told you to watch it the it fact that I asked very, you to... well the fact that you told me to watch it and <laughs> it was it was it was oddly suspenseful to me because it because there were there were there were moments where you. It was just a, a, a regular scene where they were just talking and nothing. It was. It wasn't like that. It was you know a guy going around killing everyone the whole time. It was 
some some scenes it was just they were just talking normally and then like the next scene something just like out of the the blue happened it's like holy, holy crap yeah that's it, that's one thing and that's why i was thinking you might like this movie at least i was hoping that you would because all right so obviously you and i love action shows as well this is not us knocking like you know a movie i'm sorry or a tv show like you know Usually we go in the anime realm, but like Dragon Ball or like Avatar, The Last Airbender, like you and I love, yeah, you and I love action shows. However, we also watch dramas as well. And I'm a big fan of shows where some people might just say, hey, this is boring. And I ask them why. And they go, there's just people talking. That's all. Right. So I feel weird about that sometimes because I'm like, no, but there's big things going on during the talking. It's not like they're like, Like, even if. about exactly if talking about something big then it is interesting yeah if you're talking about cheese then yeah i get you you know but uh I'm like us be bringing that up the whole time. like us right now we're talking about cheese i get if people are like let me turn the channel but you know you're talking about uh suspenseful stuff like you know big things or like you mentioned you see little things going on around you not jump scares necessarily but little tiny things happening in the background which which I like, which I'd rather that than jump scares, because to me, like, ju- I mean, jump scares are they're good for certain kinds of things, but they're not my my go to thing. I prefer things that are more psychological. I love jump scares, but yes, sometimes they end up making you feel like you're on a roller coaster more so than you're watching a horror movie. Like, it's made to make you go, oh, oh, that was... Like, you can smile from a jump scare, strangely enough. But you don't smile when something appears in the background and it's not being discussed. Yeah, exactly. Um, Which, if you did... That's far more creepier than a jump scare. Did you notice uh, in the long shot of the house, uh, the ghost of um, uh, Kayoko appeared in the window? Um, I didn't, actually. It was it was the first in the first part where the teacher was talking to the kid. After all that ended and the teacher was looking out the window and they did the shot of the whole house, she was in the upper right hand corner in the window. Oh. She just slides into the shot and urine slide slid out of my body. <laughs> I was, was like, Well, this couch needs to be uh cleaned. Um changed my pants now. She just changed my pants. Uh, well, you know, the thing is, the reason why I, uh, because you mentioned uh, the psychological horror and why you loved it, and yeah, that's why I really enjoyed it as well, because I, I like this movie, I even like the original Ring, which I won't talk too much about here, um, but I like it, I like them both, because it feels like they're trying to build up to something, and definitely in this movie, while I, um, you know, while I feel... Like, the something wasn't that big, probably due to the budget and the time it came out and everything. The movie still felt like it built up to something that, you know, it's climactic, some, it's some huge event, where I feel like some other movies... Yes, of course, I'm not saying that a horror movie doesn't build up to a big event, but with all the little killings in the middle, some of them seem so gruesome and horrific, they seem like they could be the final act. Yeah, exactly. And they're not. And it's like, no, 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 more is coming later. And you're like, wait, yeah, what? I more's think, coming I later. Think- I would say, uh, with that, because I I recently saw the latest um, movie Alien Covenant, and what 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 happened there was I felt, and this is just this is just my thing. I mean, people will disagree, and that's fine. But I, I felt that it was too kill happy, uh, that more people died than needed to, and more people got brutally murdered than was necessary for the telling of the story. So I didn't see it, but I would say that that's just the times, you know, how horror movies are changing and evolving. Yeah. And the difference in styles, really, where I feel like a movie like this, um, it came out in 2000, probably got uh, some inspiration from the original Alien. Oh, yeah, no, I would I would definitely say that, yeah. Yeah, so you saying how much you enjoy Alien, I'm sure the creator of this did too, or at the very least learned about it in school. Yeah. You know? Uh, so, yeah, I enjoy this movie. Uh, what's really cool is that this actress that played Kayako, the woman who was murdered, uh, the actress who played her, played her in almost every grudge movie to date. Oh, wow, even the American one? I believe the first American one or two. Oh, wow. 
Well, because they didn't need to show her necessarily. Well, okay. The reason why is because without giving away too much, in the American Grudge, the main character Sarah Michelle Gellar, uh, who she plays, goes to Japan. Oh, okay. So yeah. it still takes place in Japan, just obviously not in the same universe as these Japanese ones. But it still takes place in Japan. So they somehow made that work. Um, so yeah, it. Uh, I really enjoy this. First off, another thing I enjoyed is very short. Which I know to some people might go, oh, I wanted more. But for me, I don't know. I feel like I've gotten to a point where in certain genres, I want them to go really long. Like I want, like I feel weird if a superhero movie is only an hour and 20, you know? But here, with a horror... This was the perfect length. Yes. Um, especially when a movie is, is done like this, a bit more, I guess, indie, avant-garde. I don't want to go yeah. too far into it, and, and you know, I don't want, I don't want to put my head too far up my own ass. But I just, <laughs> you know, I just feel like when a movie's done like this, it would be really weird if it was another 20, 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. Like I feel like anything else adding on to it, it could still be scary, but it would just be, um, uh, too much, like too hammy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the the hour and ten minutes of of, of the movie was the perfect amount to keep up the tension and I think they did the tension very well and it was it was it was it was well written with the tension because I was always I was always on guard as was I um, and I think it's funny we probably were on guard though uh, I'm not saying that fans at the time couldn't be on guard while watching it but I would argue that we may have been more on guard based around the fact that we're coming in this from a new horror movie perspective. I know you haven't seen them, but you've heard yeah. people talk about them. So we're both coming into this, I think, going, where are they going to pop out from? Yeah. And in a way, other than, you know, ones, like uh, they never really popped out like out of nowhere. There was always some kind of buildup to us going, oh God, oh God, oh God, and then it hits you. Uh, like when the friend went up into the attic, which by the way, I, I felt really strange during that moment because I'm very, like, I try to be sympathetic to these characters, but there's just a part of me, I guess, maybe seeing horror movies over time that even though I know in real life, you would want to investigate certain things, but at the same time, it's like, no, I'm going to go like, the, no, cause she left the room was like, why do things look different? And then went back in and it's like, let me just look upstairs. And I'm like, no, <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. And then looks in the attic and then she's killed. And I'm like, look, I don't oh, like yeah. that you were killed. I'm not saying you sh like, I'm not rooting for it. If I was in the position, I wouldn't have killed you, but. Oh, people always, I, I, I hear and, yeah. I've, and from the little bit I've seen, people always make bad decisions in horror movies. Well, and it's funny, yeah, and to be fair, though, let's all, let's both be fair here, I think everyone listening should be fair, there are certain things in horror movies that, without the, uh, w without the foresight of knowing I'm watching a horror movie, you would do. Yeah. Like, like, what did you think was yeah. gonna be in the attic? You, you, you have a point. But if I, but if I, but have, if I, like, heard, yes, like, rattling, or if I... If I just saw something that I sh that I shouldn't have seen or or uh, or didn't like that I saw, I would get the hell out of there. I wouldn't investigate further. I wouldn't do anything. I would get the hell out of there. Yeah, even in my own house, whenever I feel a general feeling of unease, I'm like, well, whatever I'm in right now, whatever room I'm in, whatever it might be, I'm leaving it. Yeah. It's nice to know you, ghost spirit, son. And the ghost is like, "All right, talk to you, talk to you later, man." Yeah, no, I, and it's also like, even when I see a spider, I don't return to that spot for months. Not, <laughs> for months, the no, for not, for, not for months, but. And then the spider has its own little family. And then the spider has a grudge against me. No, I was gonna say the spider has its own family, and then it killed its family, and then there's a grudge in that little spider home. So any any spider that comes near the spider home gets cursed by that gr you know that spider's grudge. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, no, but oh no, God. but in all seriousness though, uh, 
yeah, I, you know what it is? I will admit though. Yeah. If the Walkman started freaking out, yes, I would have, I would have left. Mm-hmm. I'll give, I'll give people that. Cause I feel like people are going to tell me, well, you know, the Walkman was freaking out and yes, that is definitely when I would have jumped out of that window. I would have been like, well, there's, <laughs> Jump out of the window. are there bushes down there? Oh, there's branches right outside here. Well, I'm climbing out. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. I thought she was going to get things down there. I thought she was going to get pushed out of the window, but the movie, I think it really wanted to drive home the fact that it's about the home and what yeah. happened in the home. And Which, then yeah. Ha- and, then, and then that's why the, when they were trying to sell the home in what I would probably call the epilogue, when, the, when yeah. they were bringing up about, about the sake. Yeah, and it's it was a very interesting, I think, thing to do because, you know, it's um, I, I think to some people nowadays, especially you know, with what horror has become, yes, of course, you might go, oh, there's ghosts in a house, but I guess the things that ghosts can do, it makes it feel like it's not just about the house, and in a way, it isn't, which is cool yeah. when a character can just get come in contact, then go to a school and still be affected by the ghost, but um. But I, I think it was nice to keep it very simple, obviously for budget concerns, but still to keep it in the home and to not have it venture out to be too much. I know yeah, later movies uh, will have visions outside the house, but again, you know, budget increases and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it was very interesting what they did with it. And even the jaw scene, I didn't think that they'd show the jaw because of the budget. And then when they did, I thought, you know, despite the CGI not looking the best, still money in yeah. 2000, you know? And the thing about the CGI, I, I think it's possible to make CGI, like, um, to make CGI look legitimately terrifying. I think that was also true in the 90s. Okay, so... And, and you know, yeah. 90s, early, early 2000s, because... Oh, what, what were you going to say? No, so you so you found it terrifying, even though it looked obviously completely 100% fake. You found yeah. it terrifying because no jaw girl has no jaw. Because I'm, because I'm used to watching things like classic Doctor Who where they, they, they could make, like, bubble wrap terrifying. They, yes. They, 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 do, they could do little things that would, that would scare the flaming crap out of you well yeah i would honestly i find physical um like real life effects uh better than bad cg so that's why i wasn't as terrified as you might have been when i saw the the no jaw but i was still disturbed because i was like oh you did show that well i wasn't i I wouldn't say i was terrified but it made me like it, it it made me it made me uh 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 Question how dry your pants were. Yes. Okay. Fair. Exactly. Thank you for. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I make the thoughts, uh, I solidify them and make them very eloquent. You know, Shakespeare would have written that. Yeah, um, he would have. He actually would have. He was not, he wasn't, a, he was a, he, he had a way with words, but he was also very dirty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I have to say though, even though I, even though I do like that the end saved showing Kayoko in her full glory coming down the stairs with the blood. I don't know. I still, like I said it earlier and I really want to hear your thoughts on it. I don't know if I was a fan of rearranging all the plots, like, you know, like all the stories to be out of order. How did you, cause I don't think you actually said how you felt about it. Just, we acknowledged I, that it I happened. I usually don't like that. Okay. So even in, I, I usually don't, um, sometimes when it's needed, and it's and it makes sense in telling the story. I don't mind it, but usually I just don't like it. And yes, that, that's a personal preference for me. Uh, some people, some people are are probably like you know, why not? But I just, I just feel like sometimes it takes away from the storytelling. Yes, I, because when you're too. Because when, because it it could lose you. Because when you're too confused, you'll be like, "Uh, what? Well, which order did that scene happen in? And was that before this?" And if you're thinking about that, it kind of takes you away from what's actually happening in front of you. Do you think that happened to you in this movie? Not as much. 
Okay, because like, cause it but, happened... But a little bit. It's yeah. not as much, though. It did happen to me as well. That's the only thing that kind of was a little awkward, where at least, if I remember correctly, while I wasn't the biggest fan of it in Pulp Fiction, they did put up cards to tell you what day it was and what time it was. Yeah. So here they didn't do that. They just said when, name of character. When they, when they do that, I can forgive that a little bit. Yes. Um, it's it's a overused trope by now, you know, by the time it's 2017, right, as we're doing the podcast. But, yeah, it's a bit forbi- forgivable when you show timelines and, you know, you can try to guess when something is. Um, the reason why uh, I felt weird about it here, well, I still said earlier, you know, and I, I stand to it, right? I love how they kept the big reveal to the end. It still feels strange that I had to, you know, look online to kind of make sure and kind of see, oh, this is how the plot went. Okay, and then it got cut up here and thrown in there. So, you know, oh, that led to this because I had to read up on it online because while I still say that I love the movie's hour and 10 minute runtime, because this is the first movie and the first time we're really being acquainted with any of these characters, we don't really get to connect to them and see their, uh, you know, family histories and connections too much. Yeah, yeah you didn't. You didn't really get a sense of their their world. Only that you know, you know. I knew you know he was a teacher, and I knew he was. Yes. Well, this thing. it really felt like you were only supposed to care about the teacher, his obviously his you know fiance and unborn child. So the teacher and the the woman who was killed, who then becomes Kayako. Well, she is always Kayako, but like you know Kayako, the monster, the grudge. All that stuff. I feel like those were the only two people we really were supposed to care about in any of this, even though there were so many stories, because it felt like everybody else, it's like, oh, you know, my name is such and such. Okay, cool. You're going to either die soon or we won't ever hear from you again. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I also, like, along with the, the switching of the time thing, I do think introducing too many characters too quickly is also uh, a, a device that I'm not a fan of. Yeah, the only reason why, and I'm not going to excuse it because, you know, I wouldn't excuse it if it happened, and when it does happen in, like, newer uh, comic book movies, like DC movies, yeah. uh, in a year from when this movie came out, so in other words, in 2001, they had come out with the second grudge, the second Juon. That was, I believe, also another hour and ten minutes long. So it wasn't like you had to wait long to get another, uh, like, another release. And I guess I assume it complemented it because it actually is the same cover with the hand over the face but blue. So I assumed that they made sure to tie up anything in there. And, of course, there's those other uh, specials that, you know, those other little shorts that... Oh, actually, it's funny. One of the shorts, uh, do you remember the girl, uh, Tsuyoshi's girlfriend, right? When she got a call from 44444. Yeah. That's the name of one of the shorts. Oh, my God. <laughs> so apparently, like, and what's interesting is 44444, uh, four, 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 that's a Japanese thing, like a Japanese omen, because the word for uh, death in Japanese is shishi. She, in Japanese, also separately, just the word she, means four. Oh, it's a play on words. I love that. Yes. Uh, I just, love that so much. It's certain cultural things that don't exactly translate over, like how in some countries they don't understand why we're weird about the number 13. Oh, yeah. And I forgot what country it is. It might actually be Japan. I thought there were some buildings that don't have like a 44 or a 4 or something like that. Like, the floors just skip. Yeah. Um, I believe, I don't know what, uh, where it happens though, but it has happened in, in certain countries. I know another thing too is I believe it was Japan where purple is the color of death, which was why for the longest time you didn't have a purple uh, Sentai member. Which, if anyone doesn't know, Super Sentai became Power Rangers in the U.S. So, for the longest time in Japan, you didn't have a Purple Ranger. Oh, wow. That's Un- interesting. Until, like, 07. Wow, uh, I didn't know any of this. Yeah, just, you know, Bad Omen stuff, you know? 
So, um, so yeah, so four, 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 not a good omen. So that's one reason why that number called her. But that also is a tie into something that I believe the shorts, I already said this, but I'm pretty sure they were released before this movie. So before 2000. So, uh, they were actually released internationally on, I believe it was the second grudge director's cut. So you can buy the grudge Two director's cut in the U S and actually get those movies subtitled. Yeah, it actually is pretty cool because other uh, before that, I'm pretty sure there was no way to find them. But um, and maybe we'll do those as well in like a little mini short podcast or something. But because um, I haven't seen them, I just read a little bit about them. And uh, yeah, I thought that it was interesting to showcase the boy in because I feel like in this movie you don't really get much about him, and you don't know whether or not he's alive or dead. I don't know if they wanted to make that because. Obviously, we know as the movies go on that he's dead, but in this movie, it felt very open-ended because you saw him in white in the school, but hanging around the teacher, he just looked fine. Like, obviously, except for the clear beatings that he, you know, he had the bruises and the yeah. everything. But other than that, he looked like he was alive, which was very strange. I was, I was confused about that, too, uh, at points, because is, is, is it like... <laughs> Because I thought we is we you know, is he being possessed by something like because he's normal sometimes and sometimes he's he's all white in the face. So is is he is it a thing that just happens to him that he it, that ticks inside of him sometimes and he turns into this thing? Because I, I was I was kind of confused there. I mean I like the fact that it was open ended, but I, I was I was confused. He's the Incredible Hulk. Um, I <laughs> yeah no what I think is um the way I look at it, right? I feel as if, you know, he is dead, but I, I don't know if it's to, I don't know if it's a, like a Japanese myth thing or it's just what they wanted to do. But, um, I think maybe they were just like, Oh, it's easier to show him in that form to the teacher to try to lure the teacher in. Yeah. I just thought he was alive at first. I thought, wait, did he not die yet? Or in this version, I didn't know if the newer movies were like remakes in the Japanese ones. Um, I don't know I what was. He, I thought he had not died yet. Yeah, because he's talking to his mom, and I'm like, "Oh, that makes sense." And then all of a sudden, I see him in the school, and I'm like, "Oh, wait, never mind. You're real. <laughs> like you're like really dead." Um, so that was interesting. Uh, I'm thinking of it, anyway, So, I think that okay. So the one thing that I felt was too much. And it's funny because most, I'm sure some people would say just the movie itself was too much in some respects. But I think the one part that was too much and I think didn't really need to be in this movie. And that's kind of what uh, brought it more into like a modern horror sense and took away the suspense. And I would argue even made it more cartoony in a way was how the husband, who was obviously, again, piece of shit, right, goes, kills the guy's fiance then has the fetus in that bag. Mm -hmm. To me, that was too much. And the reason why I use the word cartoony is because, like, I didn't know if the guy was drunk or was trying, or, you know, was under some, like, psychosis. Like, you know, he mentally snapped. But, like, even when you mentally snap, you snap back. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have a mental breakdown and then just become the Joker. Like, that's a comic book. But no, but it's true, right? Like you might have a moment where you snap and then you you end up becoming like that, you know, like a Joker, right? Like a, that character. But then you snap back to reality. You don't just stay there. So the fact that the guy just ends up killing, you know, the teacher's wife, rips out the baby and then has it wrapped up and then kicking it. It's... Oh. It was that was the part that that really reminded me of why horror is not my go to thing because I don't like I don't like seeing babies being killed. But that's the thing, and that's what's so strange is that that's not typical all typical no, cuz like when I think of horror movies, just this is just me, I guess. I think, "Oh yes, Jason killing horny teenagers." You're right? like um Freddy killing sleeping teenagers like 
for some odd reason, uh, teens, but still like, you know, killing, not taking out children or unborn feet. Like that's not every horror movie. I know that you know that Anthony, but like when I think of horror, I think of like, oh, you know, people move into a new house. Oh no, it's haunted. Well, you're all fucking dead now. Right? Um, I think, yeah, the most I can think of, of like a kid, someone like really young, like getting like quote unquote tortured in a movie is like, you know, The Exorcist. Yeah. Or any movie like that, that involves like, like an exorcism movie that involves a kid. Right. But I don't, you don't really see movies like this often. Well, first off, like, you know, having this much suspense and then doing something like that, which, yes, it was horrifying. I'm not saying, and I'm not saying that that can't happen in real life. I'm sure there's cases of that happening in real life, sick stuff like that. But the way it was done here, I guess, just so out of the blue, when, like, you know, when everything was building up to a very big moment, and then that happens, and then you're like, oh my god, he killed the wife, and it's like, not only that there's the baby and it's like it's sick don't get me wrong i'm not saying that it doesn't it doesn't give me like a a good feeling in my stomach right i feel queasy even thinking about it but it's just the fact that it felt too much yeah and and maybe in some movies it's not too much especially if it was a parody movie it wouldn't be too much like a parody as in like not meant to be 100 percent. oh my god this is serious this is crazy but with everything that the universe had built up what this movie had built up already it didn't feel in line with what was already being done and what even with happened with what happened after it seemed like it didn't fit yeah i felt like that too i felt like i felt like i felt i feel usually like when you go when you go too overboard something it, it, it tends to lose its effect like again, I mentioned Alien Covenant earlier. They um, they just went too overboard like that, and I think it's another case of that where they just throw in an extra an extra zinger where it's like, yeah, no, you pounded it more. I would argue that if you do go there, you have to stay there at that level of intensity. So that's what kind of felt weird about this too. And some might say, no, but Kayako showing up, that was the level of intensity. But I, I feel like it's two different waves, you know, like showing her to me, doesn't make me think about that fetus. Like, I feel like that's two separate, like it's not on the same, I guess time. I don't know if timeline is the right word, but the same like track, right? Like it feels like it diverged into two different separate tracks, not Oh, like I you I would argue it should have been flipped if there was any reveal. You know, of like just learning that the kid died too or something. Um because that's the thing, I wonder if maybe, you know, they thought, oh, or the writer, creator, director thought, oh, maybe they won't get that the kid died if you know, because they don't have time to explain it later. But even if you don't get that the kid's gonna die, it just feels really or the kid died and it wasn't just the wife, it just feels so strange to show it that outwardly because again like we mentioned it feels like it loses its effect Mm -hmm. yeah also i did know uh just from reading a a brief summary while watching the movie trying to like piece everything together uh that she was in love with the teacher but i feel weird about making her that much of a stalker yeah and the only reason why is because like we okay so i want it to seem like the guy that killed her is a piece of shit. And he's a piece of shit no matter what, especially for what he did to the teacher's fiance and unborn kid. But her being that much of a stalker makes her seem a little weird. Well, yeah, that's true too. Like, I feel like, I I don't know, like, look, I know that she's a killer in death, right? After everything, she's, you know, killing people with that grudge. But I feel like it would... I don't know. I felt like for a bit there, I was like, oh, but she was killed by her husband. There's some kind of remorse there. Like, yes, she's a killer, but you feel that sense of pain. But when you make her that much of a stalker, like writing in this notebook, like, oh, yeah, I can't believe he's with this girl. I can't believe he's doing this. Oh, God. Like, it doesn't make her seem sympathetic, which I guess you could argue, but that's the point. That's okay in life, right? But I just want to make it seem like when you die, 
it feels weird to try to, you know, it's like, like, I feel like the guy is a dick no matter what, but it would be, I don't know, maybe more impactful if he just killed her over something minor. Because, yeah, yeah, because I maybe, you know what it is? Maybe I'm thinking of the manga, because I have a manga of it, and I also have a book. Uh, well, actually, I don't have the book, sorry, but I, I've read a little bit about the book. And I think in the book, he might be more of an alcoholic. Maybe that's why I'm thinking of the books. Or more of an outward, like it shows that he's an alcoholic who beats his wife and kid. So, before he killed them, in general, like in life, he just did that because he's, again, a piece of shit. So, maybe I'm thinking of that more than uh, what actually happened in the movie itself. So, maybe yeah. I'm taking that with me and i'm thinking about that too much because again in the movie he killed them but it's never explicitly stated that he did anything else other than that not that it's not that it you know absolves him at all but uh just i don't know making in my opinion making her a stalker makes it seem like i don't say the word justified but you see what i mean though right like it tries to paint her in a negative light oh yeah as if it's like yeah and i don't actually have a problem with um i don't have a problem with a story that where you don't sympathize with anyone. Yes. I actually, I actually think that can that can be strong and effective in in storytelling when when just everyone's the asshole. I think right. that that really works. So yes. So then, do you think it was effective here? Um. I mean, a, a little bit, but I th- but I think if if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, uh, commit to it instead of have this person a little bit sympathetic and then this and then this happens and then now they're not oh okay so then you felt like um up until the reveal it felt like we were supposed to sympathize yeah and then when we see that it's kind of like oh so i guess i'm not supposed to sympathize all right i uh, like are we only supposed to simplify uh of the are we only supposed to um <laughs> simplify are we only supposed to identify and kind of connect with this teacher yeah. Um, oh, I felt, yeah. Is that it? Like, cause he died. So, whoops. Um, yeah, it's, it was interesting though, uh, what happened with the teacher because I, well, what I think was really cool was that you think he's going to get out and then she appears from outside the house, kind of solidifying the idea that you're not safe. Yeah. And I say that because, It happens in other horror movies as well, right? Where it's like, oh, I'm running really fast, but Jason's walking. But he's walking so fucking fast that, oh my god, he caught up with me, I'm dead, right? Like, it's the whole, I'm running so fast away from him. Oh no, he's in front of me! Right? (laughs) So, and I, you know, that movie also came out in the 80s, you know, obviously, um, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street did as well. I'm sure the creator of this movie looked at those as inspirations too. Because just that big reveal moment was so interesting. To me anyway. Because it really made me sit there and go, wow. Like, it's very reminiscent of the whole, you know, you can't escape atmosphere. Yeah. Which is, it's funny because it's kind of hard to do when you do uh, have a house. Because, as I mentioned earlier, it's well, it's good that you can find it to the house. If you feel like you can just walk out. Yeah, that's another thing, too. You need to have a reason for staying or... So something has to constantly be going on in in the house because you can always walk out of a house. Exactly. Or, right, when you leave the house, like, you know, earlier in the movie, it the grudge follows you. That curse is just part of you now. So it really raises the stakes where it's like, don't even fucking look at the house. Yeah, no, I wouldn't even look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like it takes the Amityville thing to like a whole nother level. Oh yeah. And that's, that's also, yeah, I was going to bring that up too. That's also what it reminded me of. It reminded me of, of the Amityville legend. I I haven't seen any of the movies, but I know the legends obviously because it's Long Island and it's here basically. Right, right. What's, what's, uh, that's what it reminded me of. What's funny is it did not remind me of that. It literally took me to this moment to think about it. Um, the reason why I I think that this might even be scarier, though, and I know some people might go, no, but the Amityville's real, man. It's a house. It's there. But the reason why I would argue this is scarier is because um, 
I know to some people, the devil is like the scariest thing ever. Because they sit there and they're like, no, it's real. Not like a concept like, you know, oh, I believe in the devil as I believe in God. No, like, no, it's real. It's in all of our lives and it's in our Pokemon. So um, <laughs> when hey, that's what some people say. So when I look at but when I look at the devil, I guess because it's in so much media, it can still have power. No, no doubt about it. Right. But like it's a bit different than like creating something new out of out of this where it's like, oh, this is not something that I've seen before. Yes, I've seen hauntings, but nothing like this, in my opinion. Like, there's something, I don't know. I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong in saying Japanese about it. Because, again, I'm not saying that there aren't other um, places in the world that the U.S. hasn't created movies like this. You know, again, Amityville existed, right? But if you don't know about the, do you know about the Amityville story itself or no? Yeah, Yeah, because it's supposed to be, if anyone doesn't know, the Emmyville story is like, oh, you know, a man kills his entire family in the house with an axe and shit, and it's very scary, and he was possessed, but he was possessed by the devil. So, to, like... Yeah, he was, yeah. Yeah, so, like, trying to say, like, the devil, like, it makes it so, not cartoony, but, like, obviously it's like, Satan has a lot of other things to do. It's, it's... You know? It's kind of a cliché. Yeah, yeah, like I mean, Satan has so many other things. Like you can tell me, it's like someone working with the devil, right? A demon, but yeah. saying like, "Oh no, no, no!" It was Satan. I'm like, "Look, man, Satan has Yu-Gi-Oh cards to print. Like he can't be sitting here <laughs> possessing. <laughs> he just can't. He has Magic the Gathering cards to make, man. He can't just, you know, be printing. Uh, he can't just be, you know, possessing every random white guy." Legos to leave on the floor. Oh yes, no. The amount of Legos that Satan has left on the floor, uh, it's it's very apparent. But um, yeah, all jokes aside, I just um, you know, I, I don't know. Like I I know some people would say, and that's the problem with the media using the devil. It makes him seem less real and more cliche and all this stuff. Uh, I I get you. I I hear you. I hear you. I'm just saying that here, making someone new out of just the idea of oh yeah, it's a ghost, but. If it touches you, you can't even leave. It's, it's you know, it'll follow you everywhere. Which, yes, some hauntings, some movies, they, they do that too. Where, like, a spirit can attach itself to you, even if you move. But... That's cool, actually. Yes, yeah, some haunting... I, I wouldn't... Not for me. I wouldn't want it to happen <laughs> to me. But it's a cool <laughs> plot point. Yes, yes, yes. I am wishing for things that I shouldn't wish for. No, 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 no. Um, But, yeah, I... I do think it was very interesting here. I love the whole selling the house thing because um, I know for you it's it's a new experience for you to see something like that. But yeah, I actually haven't seen much of that either in horror. You usually don't delve into the... Because something like this would normally be looked at as, oh God, like we have to, we have to, you know, deal with the whole uh, selling of a house, like real estate. It's like no horror movie would normally look into that. Yeah, and that's exactly, I guess, the thing that I loved about this horror movie was the thing that was non-horror about it. Right, because it was so... It's not... Okay, like, I know some would say it's mundane, but to us, it just seems like it's... Sometimes it's okay if something mundane is being done, because it shows you even in the mundane, something scary can happen. You know, it's not all about, oh, it's nighttime, and it's cold, and it's chilly, don't look behind you! Like, it's not about that. And then... It, it shows that, you know, that happened and, and life is going on, but, you know, that the effects are still there even with life going on. I mean, these, I like that. these killings, some of them happen during the day. Yeah. That's what's really crazy. Some of them no, happen... No, you're not safe. No. no. No one is safe. You're not even safe during the day. Yeah. You're in the house, even you're dead. Even at in the afternoon, you're dead. You're a target in the afternoon, let me tell you. Yeah, no, like, that's what's crazy. You're a target in the afternoon. Um, what I think was interesting, too, is seeing the, um, uh, seeing the, uh, esp- not, not Esper, but the psychic, the, because she's a, I mean, she's sensitive. That's what matters. She's sensitive to, you know, spirits. Seeing her um, react to Kayako, seeing Kayako look at her, but not necessarily even want to kill her, necessarily. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't matter if uh, if she wanted to kill her or not. 
but it was interesting though. It was just terrifying. It was no, it was no, it was terrifying. But it was so interesting to see because it wasn't even like because it's it's interesting to see how. Um, uh, yes, there's still a grudge even with the teacher that she loved in her mist and everything. But you know, it, it does. It's interesting to see that like she's not just some killing machine. Because I think horror movies sometimes, I don't say they get that wrong necessarily, but some horror movies just make it like, no, unstoppable killing machine. And in this case, she sees her and she's like, ah, you fucking, you're powerful. Fuck you. And then just runs away. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm tired of your shit. I'm tired of all these people's shit. You know, because when I, when they, when they locked eyes, I was like, oh, someone's going to die. And then she just didn't. She was like, ah, fuck it. You know, and that shocked me because I thought I was like, oh, she's a dead person. And she wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, I, um, I, I didn't, I mean, I, I actually didn't think, because like if, if she was going to kill her, she would have done it. And, but the fact that she just looked at her, that's all she needed to do for it to be terrifying. Yes. Question, how did you feel about, um... How did you feel about the end of the movie where she's the woman, the new people that bought the house are now, um, the, the that woman was possessed by Kayako. How'd you feel about that? Um, was it easy to tell? Did you, did you, I think, I, think I, I thought it was sort of predictable. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, I, I knew that it was, like, headed toward that direction, but, um, I just wanted something, I just wanted to see something else happening. Right. Uh, it's, it's not necessarily that I disagreed with it, but Well, because just, yeah. just that I, I could have seen something more. Maybe she was possessed by her and something else happened, or something like that. Well, yeah, I think that was, that's the reason why it's a little awkward to take something that uh, chronologically happened earlier in the movie and then putting it later and then going, oh, let's put something at the end for the sequel. Yeah. Because it kind of felt like that, you know, in a Marvel movie now, you'd get that at the end of the credits. You know, the credits would roll and then she would come back to the house and then see, this woman is possessed. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I actually don't... I, I'm not a fan of the, uh, the I'll be back ending. Okay. I'm, I'm actually I actually don't like that because I because that's just like oh sequel and it's obvious and so and, then did you and it's th- become a cliche it's, it really has so then did you think that she was gonna be killed or something because I didn't feel like that was the point of this movie no I'm not saying you know away from this movie I, I just don't like things like that in general oh okay but, but but it was it was fine at the end of this movie I I, I don't. I didn't see I didn't see a problem with it at the end of this movie. Right. Also, I think I mentioned it earlier. I think I might have gotten the order wrong, the chronological order wrong. I don't know if I I might have. What happened was the um, the movie starts off with, you know, every bad like the whole the whole bad shit that happened, where it was like, oh no, you know, um, I'm the teacher, and my wife, you know, my fiance died, and then. Kayako's killing me right now. That all happened early. Like that's the earliest thing that happened in the entire movie. Then that's when if uh, the real real estate thing happened at the actual end of everything. So yeah. So in the middle of the movie, that's when we don't really see how another couple family buys the house. And then that family that buys the house, that's when we see that it's like, Oh, the daughter, the friend, the, um, the brother. And then, uh, we never see, and then the daughter comes back with the no jaw. So that's the daughter, not, and then the friend died in the house. The brother we never see again. The brother's girlfriend was in the school, which is going on around the same time. And yeah. then, uh, I assume when you find your daughter coming home without a jaw, that's when you're like, huh, we're going to fucking sell the house. Mm-hmm. And so they did. And then that's when the real estate, when the realtors come in, and then that's why that's so far, like, so close to the end of the film. And, you know, I wouldn't have, knowing what the realtors knew at that point, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have forgiven their selling of the house. Like, I, I, I would have said, don't sell the house, because that's just, 
stupid, and nothing good can come from that. But the, they threw in the sake, and I'm like, okay, it's forgiven. Yes, yes. You can sell it. You can sell it if they if they if they drink it and they and and nothing happens. That means that they can withstand supernatural, and I love that. And that's why I forgave them for for selling the house. Okay, yes. So you were so you I, were. I, I, norm, I normally would have thought that selling the house is just a stupid thing. And you would have hated them for it. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um. Anyway, so we have to sadly wrap this movie, wrap this podcast up about up about this movie. Um, I'm watching this funny. The reason why I say wrap the movie up, I'm watching the movie while we're doing the podcast, and the movie just ended, and I feel weird going on longer than the movie did. Yeah. So yeah, I um just want to thank you all for listening in. Anything you want to say about this movie before we wrap things up, Anthony? Um. I, I really liked it. I uh, I'm not I'm not usually a fan of horror, and I mean I do want to actually get into more horror things because it it does interest me. I just there are certain aspects of it that kind of that that I'm kind of uh, against. Thinking. Yeah, yeah. But um, I, I do I do want to get into more more of this. So because I because. It's interesting. You saying that to me now makes me want to show you more horror movies and for us to podcast on them. You know you've opened up a Pandora's box of awful. I, I real as I was saying it, I was, re- <laughs> I, I was like, I, I shouldn't be saying this right now. Stop talking right now. Oh, no, it's too late. <laughs> well, I mean, we can do more grudge if that makes you feel better. <laughs> sure, why not? Okay, okay, so... <laughs> Uh, even outside the month of uh, October and outside our little Halloween in July, uh, yeah. we might be doing uh, some more horror movies, perhaps. It's, Matt, it's no longer July. <laughs> well, I'm talking about outside of that event oh, that okay. we did. I thought you were. I thought you were gonna say, and for July, it's the month of October now. That's why I said Halloween, Anthony. <laughs> oh, um, speaking of some stuff that we've done in Halloween in July, though. Uh, you know, I know that you and I, we were doing, um, and this is not just a let's play pug, a plug for those guys play, which is our YouTube channel that we do let's plays on. It's not just a plug for that, but you and I were doing fatal frame as we wrap things up just briefly. Did you think that this movie reminded you a little bit of fatal frame? Um, a little, I actually wasn't thinking of fatal frame really that much, but, uh, now that you've mentioned it, it does a bit. I would say because it came out after this movie, so I do wonder if there was some. The movie was influenced by it. Well, reverse. Or yeah, it was influenced, but that's what I meant. Yes, yes, yes. I know, I know. Um, but no, I was considering it. I know that might seem funny to some, but I was considering it, especially because looking at Fatal Frame Three, which came out years after this movie, the fact that uh, even though we're not that far in the game, but the fact that we are now in a house that kind of makes me think about this house in. Uh, in Juwan, I was like, oh, oh no. Anyway, uh, so again, wrapping these up, thank you all so much. Hope you like the podcast. Hope if you're listening to this, I hope you're listening to it through our blog talk radio account, which is blogtalkradio.com slash those guys on the radio. Hope you're listening to it through, maybe through our YouTube channel, which is those guys radio or those guys on the radio. You can search that up on YouTube and find us there. Or, um, you know, I hope you uh, end up checking out some more Let's Play. They mentioned that they're on Those Guys Play. I, have, I hope you check out our TG Productions YouTube channel. To search up TG Productions. You can find us there. On our TG Productions YouTube channel, I've been doing An Apocalypse. I've been doing, um, which is An Apocalypse, by the way, is just anime reviews. Uh, also doing Toku Trivia, which is trivia on different tokusatsu shows. And uh, some other new shows that are coming up there as well. So definitely check out that channel as well if you're into that stuff. And uh, definitely consider donating to our Patreon, which is uh, patreon.com slash ggproductions. There are certain different tiers you can donate to, and you can basically end up telling us what shows you want us to do, uh, what podcasts, not just podcasts, but what Let's Plays you want us to do, and a bunch of other things as well. So it doesn't just help us, it helps you get content that you want. Also, I mentioned are those guys on the radio YouTube channel. Check out Keikaku Corner, which is an anime news podcast that Tristan and I do on a near weekly basis where we discuss a bunch of different topics in the anime world. So thank you all so much. Love you guys. Take care. Hope you enjoyed the show. 
and tune in next week for something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bye, guys. guys. See ya. See ya.